Hello everybody, my name is KevGuy378 and welcome back to If My Heart Had Wings. We just found out last video that there are more girls to guy ratios in this school. And that I've heard about that before I transferred. They increased the number of, girl, of courses for girls and asked famous designers to make the designs for the new building. But as been said, thanks to that, the ratio of boys and girls is about 50-50, which is one of the selling points of this school. Bearing this in mind, I felt uneasy about choosing the school as the one I would transfer to, but I'd like people to think that it can't be helped because I'm from an all-boys school. By the way, it's now lunchtime. Agaha is in the middle of giving me a guided tour of the school building. Yeah, but this really is an amazing school. The school itself is pretty old. Due to it being a special kind of school, of course, it's famous in the local area. I've known about it too since I was a little kid. The school building has been rebuilt over the last few years, with the renovations divided into several stages, the last of which was completed just one year ago. It said that is because of the famous designers. The design uses many curved lines, so the appearance is far removed from what that generally associated with the word school. It felt like I had entered some kind of sci-fi setting. Disabled access? That's right, Miss Alo, I mean Kotori, should be somewhere in this school. Agaha, as she walked by my side, was happily murmuring as the look as she looked at the as the looked at my as she looked at my face. Yeah, same to you. If she knew that when we met on the way to school earlier, I thought she's pretty cute. She never let it go, so I'd better keep quiet. You heard it from Anchan? By the way, I'm in the same class as Agaha. She knew that I might be coming as a transfer student, which is why she wasn't that surprised by our chance meeting this morning. Sup. Sorry. The reason why we call him Anchan isn't because he's like an older brother type guy. Anaki. Meaning an older guy, like a big brother. Oh. Whoops, my mistake. I thought Anchan was a girl. Uh. Just. Forget about what I said about that. But now we know. He was our childhood friend, but he was much older than us, so we nicknamed him Anchan. He's not related by blood, but he's just like a real big brother. Agaha glared at me and said, Jeez, as I tried to laugh it off. She wouldn't really have hit me. As we talked, we went back to the classroom. The classrooms weren't exactly normal either. I feel a little uneasy taking lessons here, but maybe I'll get used to it sometime soon. It seems so awesome. By the way, there's a girl in a wheelchair in this school, right? Miss Alo. No, I mean, she's called Katori Haban Habane. I asked Agaha as we returned to our seats. I didn't ask what grade she was in, but even if it's not the same, I thought Agaha would at least be aware of her. Ah. Mm. 
Agaha reacted like she was being evasive. It wasn't just Agaha, but the other people sitting nearby who heard our conversation also seemed kind of awkward. After Aga said that, someone added, You mean today either, don't you? The way she said that seemed quite harsh. That can't be, I mean... I thought about explaining that she had left the dormitory this morning in her uniform, but I held my tongue. The atmosphere was kind of strange. Not feeling well? Yesterday, she had went out to Windmill Hill, and then later she was chasing that duck around the halls of the dormitory. And this morning, she left wearing her uniform. Is she skipping school? However, more worrying than what Katori is up to is the reaction of the others in the class when they heard us talking about her. Even Agatha looked like she had something she wanted to say, but couldn't. But I don't really know what the situation is, so I can't really say anything. Oi, Yamamoto! As the awkwardness started to fade, an optimistic voice called out. In the entrance of the classroom, a carefree looking guy poked his head and started speaking to a boy in our class. Oh, the guy known as Mabo came into the classroom. あれってやっぱジェラシーってやつだよな。いいからこっち来い。お、誰これ転校生？アニハは見た目結構可愛いけど、中身男だから気をつける。Aga and I both looked blankly at him for a moment. Nando. Long time no see, Mabo. Huh? Why is this transfer student being so buddy buddy with me? His face seemed to say, "It's me. Have you forgotten me?" Ore da yo te. Eh? Eh? Oh my! Aoi! I looked at Agaha, and she... Nia. She wanted to surprise him, so it seems like she intentionally didn't tell him. This slightly superficial guy is Mas Masatsugu Tasaki, or Mabo, as we call him. He's our childhood friend. <laughs> you seem well, Mabo. You've grown pretty big. Mas Masatsugu used to be really small, but now he was about the same size as me. It's not quite like the change in Agaha, but in the five years that have passed since we were kids, it looks like he's grown to about to be to about twice the size. We grabbed each other by the right hand. This was instead of a small, quiet greeting. Yeah, I'm back, Mabo. This time, bam! He gave me a full-on hug. Hey, hey! We were the only ones who thought so, whereas all of the girls around us were totally freaked out. What? Mabo 
Mavo suddenly backed off and thrust his fingers at the end of my nose. What? What is this all of a sudden? I'm sorry, but it's not my fault that I had to move away. If you want to complain, say it to my dad. I thought about writing a letter, but I felt kind of embarrassed. For the most part, the fact that there was no contact was both our faults. With saliva flying out of his mouth as he emphasized his words, Mabo forgot all about borrowing the English dictionary and he stormed out of the classroom. It wasn't just us, but everyone in the classroom was shocked. I think that was the correct decision. I want to say thank you. Even so, he did seem really upset about it. Don't say it like that. Sounds weird. <laughs> While we carried on talking, the bell to mark the end of lunchtime sounded. Everyone put away their lunchboxes and got ready for the next lesson. Need it here? Aga went back to her seat. She stopped halfway, then walked back. What's up? Aga seemed concerned about those around us and, and lowered her voice. Well, the truth is, my mom asked me to be the dorm mother of a student dormitory. I lowered my voice so that those around us couldn't hear. Katori is boarding there. My mom asked me to take good care of Katori. Even if she hadn't, I'd be worried about her anyway. As she listened to my explanation, Aga thought it over. Her expression darkened somehow. It looked as if she was saying, I can't believe she doesn't enjoy school. He seemed to enjoy it. I guess. It was still my first day at a new school, but I was enjoying it quite a lot too. Sokka. So nanda. Whether or not she was convinced by my story, Aga mumbled something or other as she returned to her seat. After school, I was alone and was wandering around the school building. This was so that I could take a look at some of the club activities. Film studies, theater club, there's even an RC club. This is, after all, a specialist school. Looking at the playing field from the window, in the heat outside, I saw the sports clubs practicing. Compared to my school, it's pretty calm. The sports clubs at the school I used to go to were taken so seriously. The sight of training before a match was one of grueling harshness. Wait, what do I mean, my school? I'm a student of this school now. 
I'll go take a look. And the next video, we will actually go take a look. So everyone, thank you for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and share this video. I would appreciate it so much and it would help a lot too. Thank you everybody again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.